Uh, good afternoon, and uh, thank you for asking me to speak. Um, I learned something uh, putting this talk together, and I hope maybe there'll be some uh, things you can take home for your practice that are novel and uh, that you hadn't uh, appreciated before. Um, I have no disclosures. Um, these are my general objectives. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about biliary physiology in pregnancy and um, diagnostic issues that occur in pregnancy. And then uh, the key, I guess, is the decision for surgery in many of these patients. Um, and then some of the surgical considerations of uh, pregnancies. Essentially, this is just biliary disease and taking out gallbladders, which we know there's a lot of people here who take out gallbladders pretty regularly. But uh, the nuances are what happens when it's in a patient who's gravid. Um, and so <clears throat> the fetus, the size, the mass occupying effect, and the hormonal milieu kind of conspire in uh, pregnancy to form stones. And uh, one study that was uh, pretty demonstrative of this was a study where they took uh, um, females on their first ultrasound, which is in the first trimester, and just put the probe up and looked for gallstones. And in uh, 3,200 who didn't have stones, by the second trimester, 7% did. And then by the third semester, 8% did. And then 10% had stones at six months postpartum. That said, cholecystitis, as we heard in one of our previous uh, speakers, is uncommon, one in 1,500 to one in 10,000. Um, and of these patients who had stones in this study, um, only 1.2% ever had any symptoms. So stones are common, but pathology from the stones or stones causing disease are, is uncommon. And some of the risk factors for forming, sto forming stones is obesity and uh, age and uh, multiple previous pregnancies. And so, <clears throat> I don't know why that didn't all come in. Okay. So I put this together because um, there are some other conditions that pregnant females have that are pregnancy related that can present like gallstones or present with epigastric discomfort and vomiting. Now when you treat these patients, you're gonna be treating them in a uh, framework of a partnership with your OB uh, colleagues. And so um, you don't necessarily have to know these in and out, but it's important to know because one time to me, I saw a patient for their first episode of biliary colic uh, in pregnancy and then two weeks later, uh, she called me instead of calling the OB first. And so um, I didn't say meet me in the ER. I said, well, we, you gotta call, we gotta get you in touch with your OB. And uh, we go to L&D first and we'll meet you there. Um, the important ones are preeclampsia and HELP syndrome. That's um, hypertension, elevated uh, liver functions and low platelets. Um, it happened to be associated with hypertension. And so the ER is really good at picking these out and the OB is really good at picking these out. So you have to have those around for, to help you with uh, managing patients with abdominal pain and suspected stones. So there are some other conditions that are associated with abdominal pain that are not pregnancy related and we're you know, good at figuring those out, G, uh, reflux disease, appendicitis, peptic ulcers, hepatitis. Um, some of the things in your workup that are a little different in pregnancy is that alk is normally elevated in patients who are pregnant um, and as the fetus and the placenta get bigger, the uh, alk gets higher, maybe as high as, six, as 200. White blood cell counts are normally higher in uh, pregnancy, so 12's probably okay, but 20's not. Uh, platelets are a little lower, so 150 is probably reasonable, but 50 is not, and that could be associated with preeclampsia or HELP syndrome. Ultrasound is the study you're gonna go with uh, for uh, diagnosis. It's really good at picking out stones and it distinguishes cholecystitis through gallbladder wall thickening, but it's pretty average or poor for picking out CBD stones. Um, we didn't have a talk on radiology and I was going to just fly through this, but I could spend a little more time if we have time on what I learned about other uh, radiographic interventions and the safety in pregnancy. MRCP is not typically needed, uh, MRI is not typically needed for this diagnosis, but there's no good evidence that it's uh, detrimental to the fetus. It hasn't been used 
much, oh, and there isn't much literature backup for using it in the first trimester, but it's a dearth of evidence, not any evidence that, can, that condemns it or condones it. Um, the gadolinium is controversial, but if you have to feel like you need to do an MRCP, it's safe. A HIDA scan too, probably unnecessary, but the fetal exposure is very low, um, and so it is safe. And any ionizing force of form of radiology, like plain films uh, and uh, uh, CAT scans, is something to avoid. Um, endoscopy can be used if you need it. It uh, would be nice to avoid fluoro if you um, are going to use an endoscopy. A couple of differences that I learned in uh, management of these patients is you to treat their pain, you'll treat it with opioids like everyone else, but, um, and those are safe. But if you're going to use NSAIDs, you shouldn't use them in a, a prolonged pattern after 32 weeks because it has an association with a, a early closure of the ductus. Um, Antibiotics are generally safe in pregnancy, but there's a general trend in the literature to suggest avoiding aminoglycosides since it can lead to hearing loss in moms and babies if it's overdosed. Um, now, the decision for surgery, um, clearly if you have complicated biliary tract disease like cholecystitis, cholecystitis, or pancreatitis, you're going to intervene on those patients, so there's not much of a discussion in for a decision for surgery, and then asymptomatic stones you're not going to operate on. So it's all about biliary colic and what to do with patients who have biliary colic. Um, one recent study, 2017, so really fresh off the press, was a population-based data st link study. Of course, this has to be done in Northern Europe because that's where they do this stuff. Um, there's a million pregnancies in this study, and 0.2% uh, had biliary tract disease. Now. Some were managed with operations and some weren't, but 88% were managed without cholecystectomy, and so it's common to manage these patients without operating on them. But of those that were not operated on, uh, the 88% they had a higher preterm delivery rate, and um, the maternal morbidity and infant morbidity was higher, and those who had operations were less likely to be admitted back to the uh, L&D or to the hospital during their pregnancy. And so that sort of to me says, well, there's a price to pay for failed non-operative management in these patients, and that maybe um, it's a good idea to operate a little earlier than we do. Um, so uh, my decision path for uh, biliary colic is, if they come in with one episode, they usually go to L&D. Um, they, uh, they have ruled out all the other causes of potential abdominal discomfort. You get a hunch that they have some biliary tract disease. Um, and uh, they try and see if it's uh, uh, going to be the only episode that they have. I think that's reasonable. The patients will ask you if there's any dietary changes that they should make. There's no evidence that dietary changes have any effect, but patients love it. So I tell them fruits and vegetables and low fat. Um, and uh, the decision for surgery then depends on the clinical scenario. Is this repetitive episodes? Are they severe? <clears throat> and what's the gestational age of the fetus? Clearly, if it's not so bad and they're in their first trimester, you want to wait to the second trimester. As we heard before, it's safer then. Um, there's a general literature trend in all of what I looked in to suggest that um, early er elective surgery in the second trimester is um, what's uh, kind of the direction we're moving. And then, as was stated before, surgery in pregnancy is safe. Uh, surgical management of cholecystitis or, bile or uh, gallstones is not associated with early labor and it's not associated with any elevated uh, maternal complications if you compare the mom with, with baby and mom without baby getting a cholecystectomy. And so keep that in mind. There's no uh, downside uh, to uh, operating on these patients as far as um, anesthesia, the stress of the operation, et cetera. Um, so I would say operate early or intervene if, if they're having repetitive episodes and it interferes with weight gain. That seems to be pretty straightforward. Um, if they're having trouble late, uh, it's, there's a treatment pathway that's pretty well established of inducing the baby, have, have the baby uh, early, um, try and give the mom and the baby some time to bond, and maybe take their gallbladder out in six weeks. Um, now afterwards, if they've had a couple episodes of biliary colic and they happen to make it through and not need a cholecystectomy, um, I recommend they come back and see me because we should talk about having your gallbladder out before you get pregnant again. Um, and I usually wait about three months for that.
Um, common bile duct stones and cholangitis, there's two literature pathways out there that describe managing these patients. One is pretty robust. That's ERCP first, followed by cholecystectomy. It's the most reported out there. Um, you have to do some fetal shielding with that, and I'll show you some pictures of that a little, a little bit. EUS could help because if you put an EUS scope down and they don't have any stones, maybe they don't need the radiation and the injection. Um, and uh, if that fails, you could go to the cholecystectomy and uh, common bile duct pathway, which is also reported, but it's not a very robust number of papers out there, but they're both reported to be equally effective. And so you can do a cholecystectomy, and if you're good at it uh, and feel confident uh, in your laparoscopic common bile duct uh, exploration, that's a, a reported successful management uh, protocol for these patients. Now, if you're on your, in your uh, a, si a situation that doesn't have any of those capabilities, uh, and you do have the ability to do biliary decompression in an emergency and get them somewhere else. That's been done, it's been reported, it's been successful. Um, pancreatitis, it's the most common cause of uh, pancreatitis in pregnancy. Um, in general, the suggestion is to be initially supportive and wait and see if uh, there's any evidence that there's a stone stuck at the ampulla. If there's a stone stuck at the ampulla perpetuating or exacerbating pancreatitis, it would be uh, um, a, a ERCP followed by cholecystectomy. If you get the idea that the stones pass, their biliary numbers are coming down, their, their amylase is improving, I would suggest, particularly if they're in their second trimester, to get their gallbladder out at the same admi uh, admission, because if it happens again, they need another episode of pancreatitis. And uh, as we talked about before, it seems to be in the literature a good uh, uh, support for failing medical management or, or failed non-operative management can lead to uh, complications with pregnancy. So uh, the details of the cholecystectomy itself, it's really just taking out a gallbladder. It's more difficult later in a pregnancy because there's less room. Um, there's a literature support out there, one retrospective study that, seems, that wants to suggest that uh, high volume and experience matters in pregnancy and cholecystectomy. And I don't think that means if you're out there, you should just not do the case. But if you're new and your senior partner might want to know about this and just come in and help you. Um, laparoscopic uh, surgery is better, but conversion to open is more frequent with uh, pregnancy. And that surgery is the same as it is open, other than the, if it's late enough in pregnancy, you might have a hard time retracting the uterus out of the way. Um, third set, cement, trimester cholecystectomy has been retrospectively associated with uh, preterm labor. Um, the actual surgery itself, like we had talked about before, rotate the uh, patient to the left. It's kind of like what we do anyway for a, a gallbladder and the head up so the baby's off of the vena cava. Um, I use open Hassan access. I don't necessarily um, think how many weeks they are and count up from a picture. I just put my hands on their belly and find the top of their of the uterus and where it starts to slope away, go up two centimeters and cut down. You're going to take the gallbladder out anyway, and if it's inflamed, it's going to have to come out of a hole bigger than a varies needle and an optical entry. And so I'll use a Hassan. Um, and then, um, as we talked about before, you minimize the insufflation pressures. If you can do it at eight, do it at eight. Um, at, Put the pressure up and down and see, see where, it, where it works out that you can uh, have good visualization. Um, I put this in here because I was reviewing for the, um, to do this talk, and the picture on the bottom left is in a, like a mainstream, highly published uh, resource uh, for um, surgery. And uh, I thought, um, it's good for where the ports are, but when I shoot a cholangiogram, I shoot it with a fluor fluoroscope, and the radiation comes from the bottom. And so in this picture, they're made a little, like, radiation amplification device. And so you have to know where the radiation is coming out of the machine you're using. If you're doing a flat plate then the, uh, with a, a portable x-ray machine, then the, uh, the shield goes on top of the baby. If you're using fluoroscopy or ERCP, you've got to put the shield behind the baby. Or if you just can't remember that, put them on on both sides. Um, <laughs> sandwich. Sandwich, yeah. Fled sandwich. And uh, so my conclusions are uh, gallstones are common in pregnancy, but biliary tract disease is uncommon. 
Um, most cases are managed without surgery. Uh, cholecystectomy and surgery is safe in pregnancy, so don't be scared. Um, failed non-operative management has consequences, early uh, labor and uh, uh, fetal complications. And so uh, my opinion after reviewing this is I'm gonna have a fairly low threshold for operating on my uh, symptomatic biliary patients in pregnancy. And then I put together a couple of references. These are the, like the most recent references I could find um, with respect to gallbladder disease in pregnancy. So thank you.